Hello friends, I'm Dr. Hemant Kumar Singh and I'm back with a new video. Before we start the video, I would like to thank you all for your love and support which you gave to my last video on Teremana Tequila. In today's video, we are going to learn about the ingredients used for making beer. I'm not going to discuss the beer in great detail here because that way the video is going to be very, very long. I will try to go through all the important aspects of the beer ingredients quickly. Also, we are not going to discuss that usual fermentation and beer making stuff, rather something which is little less talked about. So let's get started. Beer is one of the oldest and most widely consumed alcoholic beverages in the world and also the third most popular drink overall after water and tea. You will be surprised to know the fact that humans are brewing the beer for the last 7000 years. In fact, we have the archaeological evidences that beer was being brewed by the nomadic communities in the Carmel Mountains near Haifa in Israel some 13,000 years ago. Amazing, isn't it? Technically, beer is an alcoholic beverage obtained by the fermentation of a mash of grains, mainly malted barley. But other grains like corn, wheat, rice may also be used in the making of beer. The process of making beer is known as brewing. A dedicated building, a place or a space for making the beer is called a brewery. Though beer can be made at home also, which we usually call the home brew. A company that makes beer is called either a brewery or a brewing company. And the person who is responsible for doing all this can be known as a brewer. Now, Beer making requires only four ingredients and the ingredients are water, malted barley, hops and the yeast. All these ingredients play a vital role in making of the beer and they have their own importance. Now the most uh, important ingredient, water. Water remains the most important ingredient as it accounts for the maximum part in any of the beers. All the beers are 90 to 95% water only. And that's why the quality of the water becomes crucial as it will eventually determine the quality of the beer. The brewer has to choose the water very carefully because of these reasons. The salts or the compounds which are present in the water, for example, the bicarbonates, the sodiums, calciums, chlorides, magnesiums, these are responsible for determining the basic character of the beer. For example, if the water chosen is high in the bicarbonate salts, the resultant beer will be less alcoholic and bitter. Whereas if the water is high in the magnesium content, then the beer will be higher in alcohol and can be more flavored also. Now we move on to the second ingredient which is malted barley. Barley is the key ingredient and the determinant of the flavor, strength and the body of the beer. The most common starch source used in beer is a malted grain. Now why the grain is malted or why the malting is done? The grain is malted by soaking it in water allowing it to begin germination and then drying the partially germinated grain in a kiln or by using hot air. Malting the grain produces an enzyme that convert starches or the sugars present in the grain into fermentable sugars. Different roasting times and temperatures are used to produce different colors of malt and eventually the different beers. 
It is very much obvious that the darker malts will produce darker beers and the lighter malts will produce lighter beers both in terms of the color and flavor and also the taste. Nearly all beer includes barley malt as the majority of the starch but other malted and unmalted grains like wheat, rice, oats, rye, corn and sorghum may be used and uh, if you want to have a gluten free beer then it should have been produced by using the grain sorghum and not by any other grain like wheat or barley or rice. The third ingredient hops. Hop is basically a flower of the hop wine and botanically it is known as humulus lupulus and is used as a major flavoring agent in the beer. Hop contributes floral, citrus and herbal aromas and flavors to the beer. Hop also helps in head retention, which is the length of the time that a foamy head created by carbonation will last in the glass. The acidity of hops acts as a preservative also, which means a natural preservative. So we need not to add any kind of artificial preservative to the beer to prolong its shelf life. Now the fourth ingredient, yeast. As we all know that the yeast is a, a microorganism which is responsible for the fermentation in beer or for that matter in any of the alcoholic beverages. Yeast metabolizes sugar extracted from the grains and produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. And we all know that this alcohol is the ethyl alcohol or the ethanol and not any other alcohol and thereby turns the wort into the beer. In addition to fermenting the beer, yeast also influences the character and the flavor of the beer. It is very, uh, very important to understand the fact that based on the type of yeast which is used for the making of beer, we have two different types of fermentations in the brewing unlike any other alcoholic beverage the top fermentation and the bottom fermentation. Now Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the strain of yeast which is used for the top fermentation. It is also known as the ale yeast as this type of fermentation results in a beer known as ale beer. In this fermentation the yeast clunks to the top and do the conversion of sugars or the starches into ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide from the top itself. The other fermentation is the bottom fermentation and we use various strains of yeast like the Saccharomyces carlsbergensis, the Saccharomyces ovarum or the Saccharomyces pasteurionis. Any of these yeast uh, can be used for the bottom fermentation but most of the modern breweries they are using the Saccharomyces pasteurionis these days. In this fermentation, the yeast settles at the bottom and performs from there. Bottom fermentation results into a different kind of a different style of beer known as the lager beer. Ales are fermented at a little higher temperature, whereas uh, the lagers at a little lower temperatures. Ale beers are usually full bodied, darker in color, more flavored and higher in alcohol. Whereas the lager beers are light in color as well as the flavors and contains lesser amount of alcohol. Although we have only two types of beers, but there are a lot of styles of beers based on these two types. For example, we have the lager, the pale lager, pilsner, ale, pale ale, the IPA which is the India pale ale, the stout which is one of the most darkest beers. Porter, Bock, Double Bock and there are a lot of other variations also or you can say the other styles of beer also. I will be discussing all these styles in detail in another video very soon. Now these were the four important ingredients which are essentially used for making beer but most of the modern day beer includes a fifth ingredient also and that fifth ingredient is known as adjuncts. Adjuncts are basically any of the grain apart from barley or any flavoring agent added to the beer. 
so the adjuncts can be wheat rice oats rye corn and sorghum or maybe orange peel coriander seeds clove honey or any other flavoring agent as you can see i have got uh, four different beers with me this is the white owl produced by the white owl brewery in madhya pradesh india it is a uh, wheat beer this is a uh, hopper again a uh, wheat beer from uh, belgium this is uh, again a wheat beer from a uh, scottish brewery known as brew dog and this is the uh, a different style uh, called the ipa which is the indian pale ale style from the scottish brewery brew dog now if we talk about all these beers uh, all these beers are having some or the other adjuncts in them if we talk about the white owl this particular beer is having wheat also oats also orange peel and coriander seeds similarly this beer the hopper which is from belgium it also contains wheat orange peel and coriander this uh, scottish beer uh, brew dog again a wheat beer this contains clove also so this way different beers includes a lot of adjuncts into them now let's uh, talk about the beer manufacturing process in brief since we have discussed all the ingredients now uh, which were our primary concern so uh, the first process in the making of beer is the malting by now we all know why malting is done so in the process of malting we steep the grains into water and uh, we let the grains germinate and once they start germinating we uh, try to dry them using the hot air or by kilning just to stop the germination so within this process what happens is the development of enzyme amylase is there which you know convert the complex sugar or the starches which are there in the grain into the simpler sugars then uh, the grain is uh, milled uh, it is passed through a mill to form into you know smaller particles which are known as the grist and then at a later stage the grist is combined with water and boiled vigorously to convert this mixture into what we call mash and uh, once the mash is done we uh, strain it and the uh, solid mass which comes out of the strain is known as the spent so this spent can be used for making a uh, compost also and some of the brewers what they do is they sell it to the farmers also which can be used as a fodder for the cattle the next step is uh, the mash is uh, transferred to uh, another container which is known as a lottering tun again the mixture is boiled but this time with the addition of hops so this is done in order to extract the flavor and the other uh, compounds which are there in the hops into the mash and once it is done once this is achieved again we uh, pass on the liquid through a strainer and the new liquid which comes out is known as wort now this liquid is cooled down and then into the wort we add the yeast and it uh, what type of yeast we are going to add it completely depends upon the brewer's choice because he is the one who is going to decide that whether he is going to uh, produce a top fermenting beer or a bottom fermenting beer which means that uh, whether he wants to produce a ale beer or a lager beer so accordingly he will add a strain of yeast and then the fermentation will start after the fermentation the beer is ready but then there are uh, some steps which needs to be carried out once uh, the fermentation is done and the beer is ready and those steps are the maturation filtration carbonation and the cellaring and once all these steps are uh, completely done the beer is now ready to be bottled and labeled and is ready to be sold out in the market so uh, this is all about the beer and the ingredients of the beer which we talked about uh, in this video and uh, i would like to tell you that in the next video i am going to taste and review all these four different beers this one is from india belgium and these two are from the scotland so i'm going to uh, taste and review all these beers in my next video so please stay tuned with me on my next video thank you so much